or someone would ask me the other day, she's like, what are you, they're like, what are you going to do when you actually find someone really similar to you? Would you get along? I was like, gosh, no, no way. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I got a nice question for Sam. How do you spark a conversation with a random stranger? With random strangers? Mm -hmm. um, I guess it would depend on what kind of environment I find myself in. All right. Like, am I, you know, am I doing a food shop or am I out at 2 a.m. in the morning crawling around a dance floor? <laughs> let's let's split it into um into a few things so casual that's just your day-to-day -day sort of people so yeah. you're not drunk you're not at a party this is just in the broad daylight <laughs> and then in yep. the evening like at a club a bar and then yep. on a date well i guess on a date it's probably maybe, it, maybe you've already sparked it but let's say the beginning of a date okay so casual like night social scene date yeah okay i guess we'll start off with with casual first then mm. look if, if you're if you're able to spark up a conversation with someone you know in the middle of a food shop you're a pretty brave human being i'll give it to you. that's a really hard thing to do um i guess there's always the trouble of some people just don't really want to be talked to in those situations like that mm. they're They've, they've gone out for a reason and their reason was not to be disturbed by the humans. Like I, I know for a fact that if I'm out at the shops, I, I, I usually just have headphones in because I don't really want to be disturbed. Like I like chucking my tunes in and, you know, doing my thing and getting, getting stuff done. Um, but if you look, were, if I had to, I guess this is one where it's just like, like confidence is key. Like if, if, if you come into this half hearted, and you come in, you know, stuttering and mumbling, like, you're like what, what is going on here? Like, yeah, like, if you're going to talk to someone in a, in a straight up way, you've got to have something that you can both kind of relate to. So for example, maybe like if you're in a shop together, it's be like, oh man, this is such a nice looking t-shirt. You know, oh man, yeah, I like, yeah. You know, for example, I guess Rick and Morty could be an example. Let's say you're in the, um, JJ's, I think, has Rick and Morty t-shirts. Got every you know, sort of shirt, up those some... guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Dragon Ball Z stuff too. <laughs> the other day. Um, but like, you know, like just something similar like that, where you can be like, oh, you have a, a point of common interest straight away. Mm. But the thing is, you have to be aware though, that they might, they might just be like, yep, cool. And then you're kind of left standing there being like, ha. Ah what next? And then, and then it's all over. And if like, you know, you, you shot your self esteem because you, you, you thought you might get something more out of that. But look, I can't say there'd be too many times that I would necessarily need to nor want to spark up a conversation in that scenario, I guess. What about like, yeah. say you're on a random day trip and you know, it's a bit boring by yourself or you're, you know, those sort of situations where you're a bit in a group, so like you could always spark something up then that's when um, I would casually yeah, okay. just sort of so be like, you, Oh, Hey, like, are they for, like, for, for example, I'm, I'm going to the beach. Am I by myself or am I with a group by yourself? By, by myself. I don't know. Look, I would probably just straight. Like, his, like I think in all these scenarios, confidence is going to be key. Like you just got to walk and be like, Hey, like I'm Sam. Like I don't know too many people around here and, um, you know, I just, I just <laughs> love meeting new people. You know, how's, how's your day been going? And then you just run it from there and look, if you, if they're quite receptive and friendly, then, you know, from, from that point on, you're gonna, you're gonna get some type of cues to be able to keep following down. Mm. It's like, you know, I, I don't, I don't love the, oh, you know, how's your day going as a, as a good mundane opener. Like it, it doesn't get you very far in yeah, most just, social situations. Like it's so yeah, good. I you think, know, I yeah, the best way is you need to ask you need a question and it has to be scenario based to defuse the yeah. awkwardness and just kind of be like, I don't know, say you're like at the shops or something. And then you just ask them like, Hey, have you had this before? Like, is it good? I don't know. Like that's even weird to say right there, but yeah, it's a, it's a I tough mean, one casually. 
it is really hard. It's really, really hard. And I think it's just because like there's majority of the time odds are the other person isn't going to want to talk to you. Like they've probably got like, if, for example, if I was going to the beach by myself, I've probably chosen to go to the beach by myself and I don't really feel like being with anybody else. So it's a, it's a tough one. Can be done. Would I necessarily do it very frequently? Uh, probably not. I mean, I guess, I guess that, that brings us into to the next one, the social scene yeah. of like a night out, for example, or you know, a Sunday sesh where you know that if you're going out, other people there are there to probably meet and talk to other people too, or they're much going to be, they're going to be much more receptive to it because like that environment is just going to be a lot more inclusive of, you know, people being able to, you know, get out of their comfort zone and just try talking to new people without getting just mm. totally shut down. Like what is this idiot doing? It's like, it's like a hike in the middle of nowhere and this guy is trying to ask me about, you know, Oh, so uh, what are you, <laughs> what are you, what, what are you, what, what's your five year plan? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it look, sounds like a, a big factor in that could be liquid courage. Oh, it, I don't know. Like I, I think, Liquid courage can be good, but it definitely inhibits your capacity to be able to actually communicate with someone well. Like if, for example, like if I'm inebriated to a, to the point of being overly confident and I approach someone who's not on the same level, and you're like, mate, get out of here. <laughs> See you what are you doing? You stumble all over the place. Like, yeah, I heard like half of the words in that sentence. The rest was just, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So like, yeah, like I, like I was saying with the other one, confidence is 100% key. Like I, I genuinely think if, if you just go up and you introduce yourself in like, Hey, like I'm Sam, I, I, you know, I'm, for example, I'm new to the area. Oh, Hey, I'm Sam. You know, how's your night been going? Mm. Just the fact that you had the confidence to walk up to someone and put yourself out there is usually they're like, Oh yeah, well, I have nothing to lose by, you know, entertaining this, this overly, you know, joyful <laughs> smiley you know, man con- yeah smiley man like you know if you, you if you approach them with a smile odds are they'll probably have a smile too um and look i think the important thing to remember with this one is that even if you go up and you have a you have a you have a you have a lovely little conversation and it kind of peters out into not very much or if they're just not very receptive at all it's like pff, the heck's this guy doing like what 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 what, what kind of ulterior motive is 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 driving behind this drunk man <laughs> then then you haven't lost anything i think that's the important part is that you you literally have nothing to lose and and everything to gain so if it isn't going the way that you might think it was going to go you're like okay cool you know oh, anyway it was nice it was, it was nice meeting you have a good night and away you go mm. you know it might have been two minutes worth of your night and you've wasted nothing you know you've essentially all you've done is just you know show to show yourself okay cool i can i can do that and <laughs> my uh well, one of one of our friends from city has it has a classic has a classic one liner that has always stuck with me which is get your rejections up early so it's <laughs> it's that it's that point of talk to as many people as you can just get in the groove and that way you know like all of a sudden you're like oh you know people not want to not want to entertain my conversation is is fine but usually you'll find that quite early on all of a sudden you, you, you made friends for the, for the rest of the night and they're kind of, you know, stuck by your side. Yeah. It's also important because I've seen this many times, like especially on the dance floor, just guys and girls, but it's just approach people. And then you can obviously see that person is not about it. And then they just linger there. So it's, <laughs> it's important to be, I think, to be respectful and read the room. Yeah. And if someone doesn't want to chat, that's when you just, you know, just ease away. Like that sort of Homer Simpson thing back into the, back into the bush, just disappear. And um, I, I, I also, I also think, yeah, yeah, you're spot on. And that, that's where being too drunk sometimes can be such an inhibiting factor. You, like you don't realize when you're being annoying. Yeah. You're thinking, so, Oh like, yeah. They're loving this <laughs> chat. They're loving this chat. But, I mean, you're just literally just there, like, you know, uh, licking your lips. <laughs> you're a little bit like saliva falling down the other side of your face. And you're like, damn, this chick's digging me. I am on here. <laughs> when really she's like, mate, where's your, where's your carer? Like, are they sitting around here somewhere waiting for you to come back? 
<laughs> um, yeah, look, like if I guess another another one to show that yeah that that yeah that you have nothing holding you back and you really don't care if people think about you is a straight up compliment. Like it it'll work for some people. It may not work at all for other people. But mm. man, like if it just gives you a talking point straight off the bat. And if and if you kind of you know, oh you know, I man, your 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 dress looks absolutely amazing. Like I, I love the I love the blue colour. Like, oh I'm Sam by the way. It's you know it's nice to meet you. So what do you like, try oh to, thanks so much. What do you try to compliment in that scenario? Like Oh for me, I, I like shoes. So I think shoes are pretty cool. Yeah. And like everyone has their own particular style in shoes. Like if they if they're wearing a pair of shoes out they obviously think it's a pretty good looking pair of shoes mm. and it's not like an overly invasive comment either. So for example, like, you know, I, I love a good pair of white shoes. I'd be like, Oh man, I absolutely love your Adidas continentals. Like I've got a similar <laughs> pair at home. I'm like, Oh look, I'm, I'm wearing the same pair. And like, Oh yeah, that's, I can either be like, Oh, yeah. that's, that's great. That's good. But they, <laughs> you know, it hasn't been taken any bad way. Or they might be, Oh, you know, thanks so much. Oh, you know, I, I love, I love your Doc Martens too. And they're like, oh, that's nice. Well, you know, how's your night been going? Blah, blah, blah. And then you can kind of, you know, roll it from there with like a, an, an easy little intro. I actually yes. really like that, like complimenting shoes. I never thought about that because, yeah, it's not so invasive. It's not, uh, you know, it's not really, like objectifying like, oh, I like you or whatever. It's just shoes. <laughs> yeah. And like it's a, like clothes can be a hard one because I guess people can get very caught up in, in, in their fashion sense. And I guess you, you could dig yourself a little bit of a hole if you mm. comment on the wrong thing and yeah, good luck digging yourself out of that one. I'm, I can't help you with that. <laughs> but <laughs> So I got some big ass boyfriend storming in like, you know, I'm not, you know, picking me up, putting me outside. Here you go. <laughs> boop, Have a good boop, night, mate. <laughs> Put up across his shoulder. I was getting <laughs> spanked anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, look, I, one, one I know that ha, has been very effective in the past that, that you have, that you have uh, <laughs> utilized for me slash us in our, in our time of need is that, Oh, Hey, can you take a photo of us? <laughs> it's such a sneaky one. It's such a good one though. Like it was, it's, it's definitely probably been a, a, a fan favorite to be a part of. Cause I'm like, Oh, well, number one, I get a nice photo, with, mm. you know, whoever's there. Number two, it's a nice little introductory way to break the ice. Cause you're obviously trusting them enough to be like, Oh, here's, here's my phone, you know, take a photo. And then to get it back, you have to, you have to have a little bit of interaction mm. and look, if, if they go like, if they go, Oh, here's your phone. Thanks. And walk away. Like, Oh, I haven't lost anything again. I've just gained a nice photo. But if they're like, Oh yeah, no, yeah, that's a lovely photo. Like, oh, you know, you take many photos yourself. Like, you're pretty good. Or mm. you know, I'll see you. you know, where whereabouts are you from? You know. <laughs> anyway, like, I like there's, it. there's so many different ways you can take it. <laughs> yeah, that one's a good one, especially like there's a room to fling a bit of banter in it too. Because I yeah. you know, like, yeah. say they take like a, a kind of shit photo, you're like, oh, what's going on? Or like, they're like, do you like the photo? And like, you know, you can fling a bit of banter. It's, <laughs> That's that's an age old secret, the family recipe. That one, man. I feel like we're like next time we're we're going out, I'm gonna get caught out for this one and be like, "Well, I know, I, I know you, I know what you're trying to do here." But ooh, I promise, I just wanted a good photo and your number it would also be quite nice. That's Look, also I guess, another important thing. You always, I feel like even if you spark up a stranger, if it's to you know romantically inclined it's always important to me either ask for a name number or something like that otherwise probably just doesn't eventuate to anything one one thing i remember so distinctly is i'm i'm normally thinking about how like they're responding or like or whether or not it's a good idea to keep going with you know whatever whoever i'm talking to but i don't listen to their name whatsoever yeah like just like basic details just get Throwing it straight over my head. I'll get like 30 minutes in and be like, oh my gosh, I have no idea, you know, who, who this person is or what their name is. And then you know, your friend comes over, you're like, ah, <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> I remember though, there was a video though. Was it, was it, I think it might've been Shooter Williamson. Yeah. Who it was, it was like a couple of techniques in terms of how to get your mates to um, oh, yeah. help wingman you in terms of remembering their name. Yeah. And it was, 
it, w- it was bringing, it was getting your friend to come over and be like, Oh, this is Johnny, by the way. And then, then they would introduce themselves and you're like, yes. Yeah. That's a and good then, one. And what if they don't, they're like, this is Johnny. And then she's like, look, uh, yeah. this is, <laughs> um, this is, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, this is Johnny. Luck. <laughs> good luck digging yourself out of that one. Um, I guess, I guess another sneaky little way you could do it too. She'd be like, Oh, you know, um, well, what's your, what's your Instagram? Cause you very quickly get the name like, Oh, just, just search it up. And mm. then just hope they don't have some kind of obscure, you know, sentences there as they use the name. Otherwise you kind of haven't got anywhere. <laughs> I remember back in the uni days, I shot myself in the foot so hard with that Instagram thing. Like I already knew her name and I think I found her Instagram. And then we were walking, I don't know, to the train or something. I was like, oh, chuck in your Instagram. <laughs> Bang, first thing she types, her name is already there. <laughs> like, oh, you already, you already know? And I'm like, oh, shit. Wow, Instagram is getting really predictive these days, isn't it? <laughs> Must have been listening to our conversation. It's, <laughs> it's this Alexa Siri <laughs> business and take, taking over the world. <laughs> Look, I guess, I guess that brings us to, to dating and like, mm. you know, for example, it's a, let's say it's a first date scenario. It's, this is where mundane conversation and everyday conversation is not going to get you anywhere. Like, it's just going to be the most boring mm. flat chat thing. You just, both of you is going to be like, damn, I really wish I wasn't here. Um, so for example, like the, uh, I guess it's, it's different too, like uh, in terms of being in person versus over messages. There's a big difference. Like, for example, like if you're trying to strike up a conversation with someone who you, maybe you've just got the number for, or if you're into online dating, you know, the example, like, you know, how's your day going? And then someone replies with, yeah, good yourself. Like, I just don't reply. I never, I just don't reply yeah. to those people. Like it's, it's like a brick wall. It's like a brick wall. Like you're like, Oh, if, if, you know, if, if, if that, if the first little bit didn't go anywhere and that's all you get, you're like, ah, oh, that's it really. So I feel like I've, from my, 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 my experiences have been to always start with something just so that they never would normally get asked by other people because, you know, in, in those types of scenarios, you, you gotta, you, you gotta separate yourself from the herd. Mm. If, you're, if you're kind of staying down in a rat race with everyday normal conversation, like, Oh, how's work? You know, uh, what did you do for you? you know, how was your day? You know, all, all that stuff. Like, it, it, it just leaves you on, on the same playing level as everybody else. So I think, it, you know, a few really handy things can just be, well, number one is a, a few simple random prompts where they actually have to think about a question. Mm. You know, for example, uh, I mean, this is yeah, quite on the spot one, but, you know, for example, does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes or no? Um, uh, what's, what's next on your bucket list to do? Um, I guess on online dating stuff, some people have like photos up there too. One that I find can be really, can be really helpful is actually going through their photos and asking a question relating to one of their photos. Like for example, if it's someone in front of a little watering hole in the middle of Europe, just be like, Oh my gosh, that, you know, that place looks amazing. Like when did, when did, when did, when did you go over to Europe? Or you know, mm. what was the best part of your Europe trip? And that way you actually have a little bit of a, an interesting cue that gives you a couple of things to start working on as opposed to, yeah, that was good. Yeah. And then you're I kind think, of waiting for them to ask you and you're like, if you, have to, if you have to wait for them to ask you something, odds are it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. I think like there's a few topics that I really like to talk about in those sort of scenarios. It's definitely travel because travel can just, once you talk about travel, it just opens up so much, especially if there's if they're someone who loves traveling or like if you've been to the same place, like you can just, you know, you can just shoot different ways. Music is a really good one. Yeah. I love music. I think, and it's, I think it's good too because everyone does have their kind, like their kind of semi-unique style. Yeah, exactly. But I guess the thing is, every, some people can get a little bit uh, uptight in terms of thinking that their music might be not liked by the other person, so they can find a bit of an awkward conversation to talk about. But you know, you tell them, you know, pick your singular favorite music artist. Everyone's got one in mind they can just shoot off, and then you just go from there. Go yeah, from there and TV shows and then places, things that I try to avoid is probably like <laughs> politics a lot. Sport sometimes just mm-hmm. doesn't like, if it's a sporty person, then it's like, that's your gateway. But if it's, if she's not, 
or he's not it's just it's yeah it's it's almost like that how are you doing it's just kind of like a dead dead end yeah look things i normally try and steer clear of is is work like number one because i can i, I find i don't really like talking about work mm. like work it works super busy and stressful and you know it's it's something that if i'm if i'm if i'm on a date i'd rather be thinking about the other person as opposed to you know how, how's my week coming up next week ah oh, crazy like you know non-stop and then all of a sudden your mind's there and it's like i'd always rather concentrate on other things that i've you know stay in the moment yes exactly and like it's i think the re- like replying is equally like like i guess this is more of an online like messaging style thing but your replying is equally as important as you as your capacity to start the conversation too like it's all good and well if you can strike up you know a really interesting chat but if, if you if you if you just kind of ignore some of their replies and just kind of give these kind of these these very closed off answers, thinking like, oh, they'll ask another question, then odds are they'll be like, oh, I'll just wait for for them to ask an open ended question. So mm. I think always kind of giving a little cue that kind of ties in something that you said to be able to kind of initiate them to be able to say something else, I think is really handy. So for example, like you know, them, like oh, I don't I don't love flipping the question back on them. Cause then it kind of, for example, it just ends up being like a, like a, like a, just a dead thing. For example, you know, how's your day going? Yeah, it was good yourself. Yeah, it was pretty good. Oh, great. You know, where, yeah. where, where we got there. So for, for example, it's like, you know, how was your day going? Yeah, it was really good. You know, did you get up to anything fun over the weekend? Yeah, it was actually pretty good. I went out on a hike. Oh, that's awesome. Where'd you go? You know, and then you, it just kind of rolls from there. So I think making sure you don't kind of answer back with the same question, at least having a little bit of a cue mm. gives them something different to be able to, spark some interest i guess i think is another thing that i think is pretty is pretty useful yeah no that i think that's really important because yeah if you're just replying pretty bland messages it's just you're just not going to get anywhere and it's just going to not be enticing and then the next person they're talking to is going to be like the one who's you know more active in their responses and yeah yeah, I mean, it's just like in anything. It's like in, a, in like a job interview. You you got to make yourself stand out from the crowd. You know whether that's I won't, I won't jump into that too much, but it's like it's it's one of those things. Like you know you know how you got to practice interviewing. It's the mm. same thing. Like if 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 you're messaging people online, if you're going up to talk to heaps of people at a bar or on, on at, at when you're on a night out, you know it's 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 a learned skill. You'll get better at it. And you'll, you'll start to, I think the, the hardest thing is getting over that fear of rejection. Yeah. And once you learn that people, as soon as, as soon as like that conversation is over and, and let's say it hasn't gone so well and you leave, they have no judgment over that, over that whatsoever. Like, Oh, that was an interesting chat. Like, Oh, that chat went nowhere. And they've forgotten about it in literally 30 seconds time. And they've already moved on with everything else. And you, and you've lost nothing. All you've been able to do is be able to gain a little bit of self-confidence being like, you know what? I can, I got, I got, I got 15 more seconds into that conversation this time. I didn't get <laughs> slapped across the face and, and, and thrown out, you know, and then you eventually, you know, you can get better at it. You find out what works. And yeah, it's like, it's like that age old saying that, that repetition is the, the mother of all skill. Mm. And well, I guess that could be, that could be taken the wrong way in like a, a night or social scene, but I can't stress enough just because you're going out to talk to someone on a night out does not mean that you're trying to, initiate any kind of intimate thing with them sometimes yeah it is but sometimes it's not and you got to go in with the mindset knowing that all right i gotta you, you gotta be someone's friend first before you put your dive into anything else so well said uh, man i think you've answered that very well and thank you for giving us a bit of insight into into your mind and thank you that's all right some advice I, i'm i'm sure there's a, a lot of things people can pick up from this and yeah essentially like kind of what you said there is, is yeah, it's always important to approach it right because if you don't, you're just not going to get anywhere, and then it's just going to be like pretty, pretty uncomfortable for the other person. So that's a big important one, thing. I just remembered one more thing, one more really good general rule that oh, I can't remember where I heard. It might have been you, or it might have been somebody else. It was. It's. It's the. It's the. It's the point of if you if you decide you want to do something do it within three seconds before emotion kicks in. Mm. Because like, if you have the idea to go and do something, you know, your, your natural instinct is you want to go and do it. But if you hang around a little bit, all of a sudden your, 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 
your, you know, let your irrational mind just go for it. Don't give your, your rational mind that three seconds to process all the emotions that might come with it. Otherwise you're going to get stuck on your feet and then you're going to have nothing. So like the, the three second rule, you have to, if you have the idea or someone else gives you the idea, you have three seconds to be over there and, and executing it. Because that way you don't have any chance for your emotion to kind of kick in and make you anxious or worried that it might not go the way of which you planned. Mm. Yeah, that's a good rule. All right, mate. I'll see mate, you later. After yourself. Yeah, we'll, we'll catch up soon.